let's get stuck into it. Okay, so we're revising and I'm still on the topic of climate. So I want to continue with the climate questions. Now, last week we looked at mid latitude cyclones. Now our first question coming up today, we're going to have a look at tropical cyclones. Okay, now if you look at the figure that's been provided for us, it's been labeled a tropical cyclone. Okay, now what do we know about tropical cyclones? First of all, a cyclone, just want to write down there, tropical cyclones. Now what do we know about a cyclone? Immediately we need to know it's a low pressure system. Okay, it's rising air. Now the name tropical cyclone is a kind of giveaway. Because if me and you think about tropical, what do we think? We think you're sipping cocktails on the beach. We think in warm conditions, okay? Beautiful, lush conditions. That's tropical. I mean, if you kind of just, the concept of a tropical. Now, we in the Southern Hemisphere, in Southern Africa, we refer to these storms as tropical cyclones, okay? Let's just revise. What do we call them in the Northern Hemisphere? Hurricanes, okay? What do we call them in the Pacific? It's known as typhoons, okay? And the Australian people call them willy willies. Interesting, quite funny. Yeah, Australians are always different. But that's the different names we have for these storms, okay? Very importantly to remember this, because if we look back at our figure, if this question, this figure set, the label was a cross-section of a hurricane, Immediately, you need to pay attention, Great Charles. I'm giving you a tip over here. If it, it said a hurricane, it's exactly the same thing as a tropical cyclone, but it's going to be in the northern hemisphere. Now, what changes from a northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere? The clockwise and anti-clockwise circulation of the pressure. Now, keep in mind, a hurricane, a typhoon, a willy willy, a tropical cyclone, all of them or low pressure systems. But the rotation of the air is gonna be different depending on the hemisphere. So if this label said hurricane, we know it was a anti-clockwise circulation. But because it's a tropical cyclone, what do we know? It's in the southern hemisphere and it's clockwise circulation. Okay. Now, very importantly, what they've given us here on this diagram, they've given us a cross-sectional point of view. Now, just for the sake of it, what will this tropical cyclone look like on a synoptic point of view? Okay, it's got a symbol for an eye and perfectly shaped round isobars. Very close together, indicating very strong winds. Now, as you can see, I've mentioned it to you. Tropical cyclones is the storms that you don't want to get stuck into, okay? Or rather, you don't want to be stuck in one. There's nothing nice about these storms, Great Charles. They're absolutely nasty. America experienced one a couple of days ago, okay? When do we experience them? Late summer, early autumn. If you think of the Northern Hemisphere, it's Hurricane Sally I'm talking about, if you follow the news, okay? It's late summer in the Northern Hemisphere, early autumn, okay? So, hurricane season for them. When do we experience it? End of March, end of summer, early autumn. Why do we experience them then during that time of the year? Because the ocean temperatures are the warmest, okay? We're looking, a key formation for these storms to take place is ocean temperatures above 27 degrees Celsius. Vitally important, okay? Now, if you kind of think of it, why late summer? Imagine you're going to your friend's house. You jump into the swimming pool in the morning, early hours in the morning, let's say 10 o'clock in the morning. What's the water going to be like? Ice cold. You jump into that same pool, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock at night. What happens to the water? It's warmed up because of the insulation during the day. Now, the same as the ocean, experience the warmest temperature end of summer, early autumn. That's when we experience these tropical cyclones. Okay, so this is what it looks like from a synoptic point of view. And 
Let's just give it a na name, Debbie. All tropical cyclones, when a tropical storm develop in a tropical cyclone, when the pressure falls below 1,000 hectopascal, when the wind speed exceeds 150 to 170 kilometers per hour, we classify it as a tropical cyclone and we give it a name. Now in this case, I just made a name up, Debbie, this one over here on a synoptic point of view, right? What does Debbie mean? It means we name tropical cyclones according to the alphabet because that's how many has developed. So if you look at the name Debbie, A, B, C, D, it means it's the fourth tropical cyclone for the season. Okay. So that's just some background information I've given to you. But coming back to the figure, and before I'm going to look at the question, let me just explain the diagram to you. Now, first of all, Look at the air movement taking place. That's quite important for me over here, grade 12. First of all, we got column B and column B. And we got rising air and we got divergence in the top atmosphere. Okay. As you can see. But we can also see this convergence over the sea surface. Right. A shows us subsidence taking place, sinking air. Just want to use a different color pen. So A indicates sinking air. Now this is quite abnormal because we're dealing with a tropical cyclone I've mentioned to you. It's all rising air. Why is it rising air? Because we're dealing with tropical conditions. Ocean temperatures are about 27 degrees Celsius. High evaporation rate. Friction-free surface. Perfect conditions. Okay. So, we have sinking air right in the middle. Coming back to my diagram, B represents a vortex. It's known as vortex 1, and this is vortex 2. And the vortexes consist of cumulonimbus clouds. Nimbus, by now you should know, is rainy clouds. Now, the area next to the eye, this is known as the eye, this is the eye wall. Now, the worst of the storm that's being experienced is close to the eye wall, this area over here. Okay, that's where the worst rainfall conditions, strongest winds takes place, closest to the eye, okay? because the pressure is intense, right close to the eye wall. Now, as you can see, divergence takes place. That's the reason we have sinking air right in the middle, because there's divergence taking place in the upper atmosphere, leaving a void for the air to sink. Now, if we can look at the characteristics of the eye, what can we say? It's clear, calm conditions. And just next to this eye wall, it's absolutely madness. Okay, we're talking about torrential rains. We're talking about wind speeds up to 170 kilometers per hour. Okay, we're talking of torrential rains up to 600 millimeters of rain in a couple of days. Now, Great Charles, that's insane, right? If you kind of think of it, Johannesburg, up here in Gauteng, experienced roughly 600 to 700 millimeters of rain per year. Now with these storms, that amount of precipitation can fall over 48 hours. Okay, it's insane, right? Many consequences regarding to that. Economic, social, environmental. We need to go, I might, we'll have a look at that as well. This is a nasty storm, okay? You don't want to be close to one when it takes place. Now, let's have a look at the questions that's being asked. Is the air pressure reading at A area a high or a low? Now, I've mentioned to you, I just want to clean my diagram over here. Okay. They want to know what's the air pressure like at A. 
space area over here. Obviously, it's sinking air, but as you can see, it's surrounded by rising air. The pressure is lowest usually in the middle of the tropical cyclone. Just want to use a different color pen because you can't see it clearly. It's usually below a thousand hectopascal. So the correct answer for the reading at A, it will definitely be A, low pressure. Now, if we quickly look at 2.1.2, .2, state the prevailing winds that drives the tropical cyclone. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't show you on this map, on this figure, but let me just try and draw it for you on a global point of view, the prevailing wind belts. Now, in grade 11, you've learned about primary circulation of air. So we got our equator situated over there, our 30 degree latitude, that's where we are situated, South Africa, 60 and 90. Okay, let's just revise over here. This is known as the equatorial low pressure. The equatorial low pressure belt. It's a low pressure belt because it's extremely hot. Okay. I'm just going to jump from 50 degree to 60 degree. This is the subpolar low pressure. It doesn't exist because of warm conditions, but because the air is being forced to rise. And then lastly, we got a high pressure belt where South Africa is situated. And it's known as a subtropical high pressure belt. And then you have the high pressure belt at the 90 degree latitude. This is because of the very cold conditions taking place. Now, five degrees north and south of the equator. Okay. This is quite important. Tropical cyclones can only form from five degrees north and south of the equator. The simple reason for it, because it not, can't form at the equator at zero degrees, there's not enough Coriolis force. What is Coriolis force? Okay, it's the wind being deflected by Earth's movement around its own axis. Okay, you've learned about this in grade 11. Okay, when you stand with your back towards the wind in the southern hemisphere, it will deflect to the left. When you stand with your back to the wind in the northern hemisphere, it will deflect to the right. Remember, air moves from a high pressure to a low pressure, is known as wind. Okay, if you go back to this diagram. So, in theory, the air moves from this high pressure to the low pressure. Let me just use a different color pen, as you can see. But it doesn't move in a straight line. No, this is in the southern hemisphere. It's getting deflected to the left, as you can see. The air moves from the high pressure to the low pressure. It doesn't move in a straight line. It's getting deflected by Coriolis force. Okay, air moves from a high pressure to a low pressure. It's getting deflected to the left. Now, very importantly, wind is named from the direction it's coming from. Okay, so what's the trade winds that we experience between the high pressure and the low pressure, between the equatorial low pressure and the subtropical high pressure. It's known as the tropical easterlies. Okay. The air moves from the subtropical high pressure to the subpolar low pressure. It's known as the westerlies. At the 90 degree latitude, the air moves from the polar high pressure to the subpolar low pressure, and it's known as the polar easterlies. Now, the question states I just want to go back to our question state the prevailing winds that drive this tropical cyclone. Okay. Now, first of all, I just want to use a color pen that all of you can see. Uh, let's use red. Now, tropical cyclones are really discussed to be can't originate between zero degrees and five degrees north and south of the equator because there's not enough Coriolis force. So it originates just below five degrees. Now, what's the prevailing winds? If that's the initial stage, when we have warm, 
ocean temperatures, high water vapor content, moisture content, okay, friction-free surfaces, the tropical cyclone develops, and then it's moving. In which direction will it move? It will move in an easterly direction. Why? Because it's been driven by the tropical easterlies. But, there's a big but. Okay, mature stage is usually before 30 degree latitude. Why? Because if you look at 30 degree latitudes, everything above it is still warm ocean temperatures. Quite warm. Okay, once we move below 30 degree latitude, ocean waters tend to get cooler. But more importantly, we're moving into a different wind belt direction, prevailing winds. What happens to the tropical cyclone? Then it will recurve and eventually dissipates because it reaches very cold ocean temperatures. Okay, hopefully that explained that question to you. So, the correct answer is tropical easterlies. Now, if we look at question 2.1.3, name the clouds found around the center of the tropical cyclone. I just want to fill it in here. The center is known as the eye. I've mentioned the clouds surrounding the eyes, vortex one and vortex two, is known as cumulus nimbus. Okay. Then, 2.1.4, name the area labeled I, A, apologies, where the winter conditions are cool, calm, and cloudless. I've mentioned that to you. I'm just going to write it down there. I'm not even going back to my diagram. It's known as the I. Now, if you look at 2.1.5, state the area labeled B where the rainfall is the heaviest. This area B, the rainfall is the heaviest. I've mentioned to you earlier the eye wall. Okay, worst weather that's being experienced right over there. Just want to fill it in there. Eye wall. Okay, then we look at question 2.1.6. In which season do tropical cyclones occur? Yes, I've mentioned it to you. Late summer. Or autumn. Okay. Now, the examiner might be able to trick you. It might ask you, what months do you think tropical cyclones might appear? Then you need to tell them February, March, depending if they give you a synoptic chart. But be very careful. If that question was based on a hurricane, when will the times be? It will be now, September, October, roughly there. Because the difference between the northern and southern hemisphere. 